Awesome, awesome, awesome. Welcome back again. Thanks, guys. It's awesome having you here on this session today. I can see Josh Fat is on YouTube ready to join. So today is going to be fire. We have this guy. So this guy is an Android developer. He's also part of the community and um, he builds also libraries. So for you, for those of you who don't know him, and I will bringing him, I will bringing him, I will be bringing him up in a few. For those who don't know him, his name is Brian Odiambo. He is a mobile engineer at NLS Tech Solutions. He will tell us what NLS is. Um, he's also a nice Kotlin user and a pro Kotlin user. So this guy, you can imagine on weekends when you're having fun, this guy is always busy creating libraries and also streamlining his mobile team's development process. So let's give it up to Brian. Brian, welcome. Hi, Cliff. Hi, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you for that over-exaggerated introduction. <laughs> are you happy today? I am very, very happy. I hope you are. Mm -hmm. It's nice you mentioned Kotlin. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so I've done my introduction. Yes. Who is Brian? Do your introduction. Um... <laughs> um, Brian is an just a mobile engineer at NLS Tech Solutions. I refer to myself as the dishwasher where I am. I make sure the dishes are clean, very, very clean. Um, NLS is like a, a company that offers software solutions to other companies, and most of them are financial based. So as uh, the mobile part of the mobile development team, uh, what we do is create mobile apps for circles, microfinances, uh, uh, and banks. That is what we do on a daily basis. Awesome. That's really interesting to hear. So who is Bran? And what, let me ask first. I know your name is Mambo Brian. So tell us, where did Mambo come from? <laughs> uh, interesting, interesting. Nice question. Um, so Mambo came from some of my friends. Uh, we so so for for those who are my friends, they know I'm a very social person, and I I do interact with them a lot. I'm always hyper energized. So one of my friends started calling me Mambo. And I remember being asked like, what does, asking him like, what does Mambo stand for? And I was like, ah, it's because he have a lot, he has a lot, a lot of things. Kona Mambo mengi in Swahili. So Mambo stuck. After that, it was just, oh, Mambo, Mambo, Mambo this. So I got used to the name and people started calling me Mambo Brian. So people use people who are used to Mambo Mambo and they just got used to Mambo brand. Yes, yes, true. Awesome, awesome. So again, welcome to this Tech Talks. I'm honored enough to have a senior like you join my Tech Talks. <laughs> I am honored. So... I am honored for you to host me very. <laughs> so, so, so we'll just have a few questions and also from youtube where uh, people will ask questions and uh this this uh talks are basically aimed at beginners those people who are starting out in android development building their career and will be bringing in new people industry experts there are so many people lined up uh to join in so yeah uh i'll start with one question what inspired yeah. you to become an android developer and how did you get started in the field 
Um, what inspired me is UI. I, I really, I really like UI. I really like how the user interacts with maybe a software through the UI and user interface and the user experience. Like that has been one of my major motivating factors. And this has been long, uh, long standing. Even I think when I was in, yeah, when I was in primary, my neighbor was an architect and he used to use uh, this software called uh, Archicad. And I, I just normally used to go there and just play with it, just create houses for no apparent reason, because I, I found it very nice and very interesting. And I got to be good at it at some point. Uh, I, I got started in Android specifically when, when I was having a conversation with my friend. Back then, I was just a driver. <laughs> Long story. Uh, my friend was just telling me, um, uh, by the way, you can be a very good developer. I was like, what, what is a developer? Like, who is a developer? Uh, he forwarded me some links and told me, just look at it, check it out, and you'll tell me, like, what, what you think. And so I was looking at it and I was like, okay, this is interesting. I'm interested in, I'm interested in, um, in computers and uh, making UI. So I was like, okay, this is a very nice opportunity. Let me, let me try and see if I can do something out of it. Uh, but I went straightly to Udacity at that time and was picking just a f like the free courses, the Android, Android, Android basic free courses. And I was so happy, like, hey, I was learning. Remember that time I sold I sold my phone to get a machine so that I can just learn being what a developer is. Um, after like I think of, after like two three weeks, I'm fortunate enough. Two three weeks there was um, ALC going on, uh, uh, the Andela Learning Community, and there was a scholarship for people to learn with Udacity. And I jumped on the bandwagon and started learning. Till now. I am continuously learning. I would say that I'm continuously learning till now. Awesome. So right now you're continuously learning. Yeah. And the um, question I can share with you is, so what are some of the tips or best practices for those who are just starting out as Android developers? Ah, nice. So tips and best practices. Be best practices, by the way, is very subjective. And you know that. <laughs> best practices is very subjective. Based, <laughs> based on people. But what I'd say is like, I would not want anyone to learn Android the way I did. And I appreciate the community where it has come till now. Uh, how uh, Frank, Harun, and uh, Akina Juma are really trying for people to be part of the community and for the community to help other people. Me, I was at start bedroom developer, just me and my machine. But that is not, I, would, I wouldn't say that is the best way to learn. The best way would be to, to learn out in the open. Let people know what you are learning about. Uh, try your level best to follow the documentation to some extent. I, 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 wrote, I wrote an article like, I think it was last year, of how to become a better learner and link it, uh, how to become a better learner. It's for you to understand what works for you. There are those people, tutorials work for them. There are those people, articles work for them. And there are those people, documentation works for them. So first, try, try and understand how you personally learn things. And then from that, build on it. If you find it is a video, take your time selected time and really look at that video and try to understand what that person is saying. After that, try and implement it on your own and try to see if you have completely understood and then try to also explain it so that you get the gauge if, okay, this is what this guy was saying. Can I explain it the way I understand it? And then after that, maybe try and look at now, you, they, at some point, you'll have to go to the documentation. Sorry, guys, but it's the truth. At some point, you'll have to go to the documentation. So go to the documentation. Try and, and see how much you can understand from it. And by that, you'll be continuously learning. And I think it's, it's one of the best ways to try and 
learn any framework or any language that you're trying to get started in. Awesome. So you've stressed about documentation. Um, and uh, one thing um, I can also tell people is uh, documentation is always one of the most free resource that you would have. For example, the Android documentation, I've never seen a really nice documentation put in place. And also the coursework, the, um, there are two. So there's the Android Compose coursework and also there's the Android Kotlin coursework. So I've never seen such an, an amazing work done on on documentation and it it also has code labs practices where someone can easily go and uh, like they can become under developers straight from from the documentation maybe just uh, another uh, another question is like so how can someone stay updated with the latest trends and developments in the android community mm -hmm. awesome question um there, there are articles written by the Android team. There are articles written by the Kotlin team. Actually, Kotlin have a very nice blog that they tell you like what is coming up. They will tell you even their roadmap on a particular on something you're interested in for maybe a, an year, and they tell you this is what we are planning to do in the course of this year. But you can come back and see like what are we doing? Where have we reached? Also, there is Android Weekly. They are doing a very awesome job at keeping you up to date if there's something new in the Android community or if there's an article. Also, Kotlin Weekly does the same, same thing. Um, uh, I'm also a Twitter fan. I really like Twitter, apart from how it is right now, but I really like Twitter. So <laughs> following <laughs> following the, I'd say the right people who, who always post their updates. Like you'd find Jetpack Compose, like I think 1.4.0 is out now. And if you are not that much on Twitter or that much on release notes, you would not know. But someone in Twitter just tweeted it and said, okay, 1.4.0 is here, and these are the updates. So just follow the right people, check Android Weekly, check Kotlin Weekly. We also do in the current uh, Kenyan community, Kotlin community and Android 5.4, we have a newsletter that we publish every single month. And there you can find articles about people inside our community that have written and some updates that are coming yeah awesome so you said the newsletters subscription on twitter um following up the right people uh and you talked about ui so yes. i have a task yes. for you yes <laughs> So can you walk us through your typical development process for creating an app from ideation to deployment? Whew. Now that is a, uh, hey, you're pulling out <laughs> your guns. You're pulling all your guns in these questions, man. Hey, okay. Uh -huh. um, yeah, okay. So um, my normal develop, it, you know, it depends also. <laughs> it depends with the kind of project. Uh, but normally, uh, what I do is try and figure out, like, wait, let me ask a question. Have we, given, have we been given the features that this app should have? Or are we thinking from the features to... From everything? ideation, thinking the features, knowing okay. this app oh, from would an idea. use internet. Yes, from an idea to deployment. Ah, awesome. Um, okay, so... For me, what I do is, uh, so let's say, for example, we have a, we have an idea. We want people around where I work to, like all the, all the Vibandas about where, around where I work, to have like a platform to like showcase what they are selling and maybe a delivery. Maybe say, that's our idea. What I would first start to think about is maybe the common features that this app should have, uh, something like, uh, like adding a adding a restaurant, uh, removing a restaurant, updating a restaurant, and stuff like that. So I outline my features very specifically and say, okay, these are the specific features that this app should have at MVP, like the minimal viable product that it should ship with. 
with the features of this. Okay. After having the features, now it's trying to think a little bit about the stack that I'm going to use completely. So you see, like right now, there's KMM, Kotlin Multi-Platform. There's the bare, like only Android and stuff like that. I would sit down and really think about what I'm going to use from start so that in, in if I reach somewhere halfway, I don't have to start thinking, okay, so ah, what was I supposed to use? What was I supposed to use here? So I think about the stacks, the frameworks that I'm going to use. After that, it is uh, me to sit and come up with a UI, the part I love most. Okay, come up with a UI. Make sure it is usable and the ex user experience is good. This, this is just, you can prototype this in Figma. Figma is free. You can do this and make a very nice yeah, UI prototypes that will guide you on what you're going to do uh, on the project. And I also saw this on the DroidCon app. They have a really nice Figma uh, prototypes that they they were going with. And I uh, saw so it was really helping the team to uh, develop faster. Okay. So we have we have our UI and we have our, we have our prototypes and we know the framework we're going to use. The next thing is just to understand how the data is going to come come in okay so that is like now the is there going to be caching or something like that now try and abstract all these components all these parts to so that they have a single responsibility I'm, I'm a big fan of modularization so that's what i always go for try and come up with modules that do not affect other modules like they are independent you know like let's say a remote module that is getting data from an api of some sort you do that. After that, you come up. To, you come to your screens and you build them one by one, making sure they work. You can you can build something. You see now that you have a prototype, you can build targeting the prototype, right? But also you can be creating something, seeing if it works. If it works, then you start doing the UI part and polishing it up and nicely. After that, you just test it, or you give. You don't have to have a tester. So if it, if it is your personal project, give it to your friend. Don't be afraid to give it to your friend and ask your friend, can you use this a bit? Let me just check how, how you use it. No, users sometimes, by the way. Users, you might, you might put a button there. I might then, instead of clicking the button, they long press the button. So anyways, so you must give it to someone else and let them test and make sure it works the way you intend it to work. After that is where the most difficult part comes in, which is Play Store. Um, create your portfolio for the Play Store app, create your pictures, create your infographics, uh, give it a very nice name, and then push deploy and wait for feedback from now the actual users. So I'd say that is a, yeah, that's the process. Awesome. So that's really interesting. And uh, I have uh, one question from uh kim gishuru uh, on youtube and uh kim is asking how long do you take to finish a project uh huh okay uh kim that is a nice question but i would i, I don't want to say it depends too much in this <laughs> in this part but it also depends we we finished a project Gemma, we finished a project in one month yeah we finished uh, we finished a project with an intern in one month and we we did everything. That was like a whole month create uh, getting data from an API, learning a whole month learning while doing. So one month it was done. But as a project, I think Theo Kibet asked me like, is this project you have been doing it since 2019? It is it is a very big project, and I've been taking my time with it, uh, building and refactoring at the same time. So it depends with the type of project. There are projects which you can finish in a month. In, in two weeks, in two months, there are others which will take longer. Just uh, like plan yourself out throughout the whole process. Awesome. So another question would be, how do you approach debugging and troubleshooting issues in your Android apps? Hmm. Debugging and troubleshooting. Hey, okay. I, I like the new. I'd say I like I like the new 
Android Studio, um, what is it called? Logcat. <laughs> it is very nice. Looks looks very good. I know people who like the old one, but I like this new one because it looks better and it can you can like filter multiple packages. So I would say debugging depends. It doesn't depend. Debugging, you need to know what you're test you're testing of trying to figure out. Okay. If it is, let's say you're debugging. Ah, let's say this week we were trying to debug a network request, right? We we fetch the, we, we send a request and the resp response comes back, but we don't know if it is successful or not. So what is the first thing to do? The first thing is to go to your client and add a logging capability to it so that when the response comes, it will log it on the log cut and you can see, okay, the response comes. The problem now might be on the serialization or deserialization. You go to the next problem, right? You start from the root source of where you might feel like there's a problem, coming back to now maybe the UI component or something like that. Awesome. You mentioned about client. So we have beginner people watching the stream today. So kindly explain to them what is client what is a client okay so <laughs> um let's say, let's say you've you've built a backend or maybe they, let's say someone has built a backend right and there's an api and you need to connect to that api there are li <laughs> libraries i'm being told to use an example for restaurants and hotel i love using that example um, yes. There's a, there's a, okay. So le let me let me use the the example for a restaurant. So imagine you you are going to a restaurant, a food a food truck, which has a has a what is it called? Mm, which has food, right? And maybe they have shelves back there, and they have stuff, and maybe there's a waiter there, and there's a chef. So what you do is, you go to the counter and ask the chef, okay, can you give me the menu? The, uh, and the waiter gives you the menu. After giving you the menu, you tell the waiter, yo, I need maybe this kind of food. The waiter goes and tells the chef. The chef cooks it, gives it to the waiter. The waiter brings it to you, right? Very simple uh, thing that we do normally. Now, think of the, of the, wait, of the waiter as your API. He, he's like the middleman. He's like taking your request going with it to the uh, to the chef telling the chef here is the request that I'm being asked the chef gets everything from the uh, from the shelves makes it gives it to the waiter the waiter gives you a response in terms of food and, and tells you okay here it is please eat it here it is so you become the client to this specific backend right you become a, 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 a client now a client can be anything can be can be web, um, can be the terminal when you use call to like ping a, a request or some uh, ping a server, and it can be your Android app, right? Your Android app can get data from the uh, a server somewhere. So inside your app, there are libraries that you can use to get to to make it easier and simpler for you to send requests and get responses. One of the most beautiful libraries like this is Retrofit. Retrofit does this very well. And it abstracted the whole part of creating a URL connection and trying to save um, request and response and trying to serialize everything. So it abstracted that whole part so that you can just focus on what is coming back and what you're, you are sending. But the, uh, the Kotlin awesome. team went far, even beyond and created mm -hmm. something fun to use called Ktor. Ktor is the most, uh, I'd say is the most simple. Everybody who have recommended to use Ktor, they say it is so simple and fun to use that. Why would someone use something else in respective to Ktor? Okay. So that is part. Yeah. That is a client that you can use to get your data. Awesome. Awesome. So... I have another question. Like, so what are what are the some common mistakes or pitfalls that new developers should be aware of, and how can they avoid them? 
Mm. Common pitfalls. Yes, mistakes. <laughs> okay. Um, I would say one is not understanding testing, but before we before we even reach to the testing part, one is not understanding what you are writing or what you are doing. So someone would go straight to the Android framework without understanding even the bare bones of Kotlin. And I've seen some of them who do it like this, they find it very difficult to understand Android. So you need to first understand the language to some degree. I'm not saying be an expert at it, just be the guru. No, I'm just saying understand the simple basics and simple, nice, the simple things to do in that specific language, okay? After that, then you can try your level best to now jump into the Android framework and understand how the how the framework uses the language. You get, like let's say for example, a fragment is just a simple class. It's a, it's a class, nothing more, nothing less, but with just added functionality. For example, compose, it is just a function that has a high order function, nothing more, nothing less. If you understand the concept of how high order functions work and how uh, Kotlin functions work, you'll be in a better position to understand how compose works. Right, so understand first the language to some degree, and then go further and understand the framework. Second thing is always try to understand what you do. I'll repeat again: understand what you do. Copy pasting is good. Actually, you can you can copy paste even when you're starting out. It's like I don't find it while you are learning. I don't I don't mind it as long as you take time to understand what you have just copied and pasted or what you be, people can copy paste even from the documentation they copy exactly what is there and put it and then just click run and then later you ask like you see this part this is what it does and they're like oh i did not know so it is best first to really try and understand to some degree of what you're trying to to get from maybe the documentation number three most important most important of all is try your level best to understand testing. Just try. It is not that um, it is not that uh, uh, very difficult to understand. You can you can test something something as simple as a function returns what you need. If you understand testing, testing will re will always require you to understand what you write so that you can test it. So testing actually helps you to understand what you personally are writing. It is not just for, for sure, like I want to show people I can test. No, the main purpose of testing is so that you understand what you are writing or what the result of what you're writing is. In that way, it will help you along your way, like build in understanding in the Android framework. Awesome. And also, Th those are and also have fun. And also have fun, by the way, sorry. But also have fun, have fun. Have fun. I'm de have fun, by the way. Don't die on your machine because you want to learn. Just have fun. Take time to re for recreation and relaxing. Awesome. As Brian has said, always have fun. Do whatever you, you do and have fun while building Android application. Um, about collaboration. So... What role do collaboration and communication play in successful Android development projects? And how do you ensure effective collaboration within your team? Hmm. 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 Hey, beautiful questions. Hey. Now I'm, I'm start, I have to really think before I answer these questions because I know people are here. <laughs> people are here watching clearly. Okay, so... I would first start, let's start with communication. Communication is very important and it's not what sometimes people think. It's like communicating effectively, very effectively. Do not presume that the other person knows or can figure out what you're doing. You really have to communicate. And communication goes the extra mile, even how your code is, it will be because of communication. What are you trying to communicate? Are you trying to make it simple? 
to the other person to understand? Or are you just trying to be as complex and as vague as possible? So if you're in a team, I remember I always tell uh, the interns, I had interns at our place, you can be the best developer. You can be the star. Dude, you can know your stuff really well. But you can be a person people do not want to work with. It's that simple. Why? Because you are not a team player. You do not communicate. Or, or you do not say, you're, if, even if you're going through a problem. Communication and collaboration go hand in hand. You have to be a very good team player with your whole team and be an effective communicator. Awesome. Be an effective communicator, guys. Always communicate. Communicate is key. Uh, I, I cannot even, stress it more. I think even in, like, like let's say you guys are using GitHub or using Jira or whatever you're using, and maybe someone opened an issue and you don't understand the issue. <laughs> Communication goes to how you, how you ask a question in that same space. Like, just ask a question. Even make a funny comment. May I have, <laughs> we have developers who make, you'd, you'd wake up in the morning, <laughs> enter into the, <laughs> the channel's team, and you will laugh. First, bef be even before you start just working, you will laugh. They put you in a very good mood because how they communicate is like very specific and particular. Mm? They are very comical at the same time and very detailed in what they are trying to solve. So they that uh, the, you'd open the, the, you'd open an issue and they'll put there an emoji and ask you eh, i don't know if this issue is for us or we need god to solve this issue and you're like okay <laughs> at least you're trying to you're trying to soften the the, the mood in the workplace awesome so assuming i'm a newbie and i'm starting out so what are the most important skills and knowledge that I should focus on acquiring? So, okay. Um, number one, I'd say is communication, as you have put. The one number one skill is communication. I understand we are very introverted people, but just try, try. You never know. Just try. Um, number two for an Android developer, I would say is Kotlin. Know the language, know it and love it. Um, number three is Git. Git is very important for you, even in your personal development cycle, like development progress. Git is very important, not GitHub, but Git itself, version control. So for Android specifically, just know, uh, know the UI framework and to be very strategical in that, know the UI framework that they are using, understand it, uh, know uh, how to get data from maybe a remote source, know how to get data from a local source, know the types, uh, how to store data from a local source. There is maybe room, there's data store, and what have you, just know them. Know how to separate your code. Don't write everything in one place. Just know how to separate. You don't have to be extremely professional. You're starting out. People understand, by the way. We do understand. So just know how to abstract just a little bit. It's this. Don't put a function and then another function. Just try to make this function do this. This function does that and continue. And with that... Um, the last thing is know how to learn. As we mentioned earlier, know how to learn because you are in for a long learning period. It will be fun for you if you start out right and it will be the worst thing for you to, if you don't start out right. So just know how to learn, take your time and don't rush it. Awesome. Take your time, don't rush it. And <laughs> I won't stress it again, communication. So those are really, really interesting points. And uh, let me just head over to YouTube. So 
the YouTube chats are buzzing and I also have one one question. Yes. Yeah. So do you prefer <sighs> test driven development or dev first, test later? And what are these terms? Um <laughs> eh, Brian, Brian asking very <laughs> very inter interesting questions. So test driven development is where you 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 write your test first before writing any code whatsoever. Write your test first, run the test, it fails, write the least amount of code required to make that test pass. After that, run the test again if it does not pass. Try and just try to write a little amount of code to make that test pass. After that, refactor. So that is test driven development, where you write your test first and then you run, make sure you, there's no nothing in between and then you finally you, you write your code, yeah. This other part is you write your logic and then you write your test to test if that logic is true. And then after that is where now, you just continue with that cycle. You write your, your code, you write your test, you go back, write your code, write your test. Okay. Now in Android, I would say it does not support test-driven development as much as it should to that degree, to the degree where you write your test first. You cannot write a test to test a database in Android if you have not created that, that database in the first place, that class and everything you get. So you have to write it first, and then test, making sure they, they return what they're supposed to return. So in Android, it is, very, it is very difficult to write a test first before writing any, any, what's, any code that should test. But you can actually do it. If you know, like if you know in your head 100%, sometimes, if you know in your head 100%, this is what, this is, what is required you can actually write your test first. But it will give you errors telling you this class is not available or this this or that is not available. So after that, you go and write your, your logic and then you come, you write, you run your test again and check if it is successful or not. But having, having that said, always, and I mentioned, if you are trying to create something at scale, at scale, Always enjoy and love writing tests. Always enjoy and love writing tests. I'll give you an example. We were creating a library which has a very specific functionality, right? Now, I personally maybe was, let's say, I, I am not part of that team that is creating that library. And then like six months later, I'm told, come to this team, create this library, okay? And then I go and tweak some little things. How will I know I have not affected every other use case? Should I start manually testing on a device on different different use case? Okay, let me let me check with this. Let me check with that. Let me. You see, that is not something scalable. We, that time that you are using, you might find it more reasonable to use it in somewhere else. The best alternative is, I am from this team. I'm told to come to this team and write libraries, what I would do is I would just come to that team and the first main thing I would do is run all the tests. Make sure all tests pass. That has solved 90% of my problems. Next thing, I add my added functionality. After that, I run the test to make sure that I have not affected all the other functionalities that were there prior to this one that I have added, right? If they are successful, you're going the right way. You're doing the right thing. If they're not, <laughs> okay, you are in for a you're in for a long ride. You're in for a long ride. So what you do is you try and figure out, you try to go back to where it was, run again your test again, make sure they pass. Okay. Add functionality slowly, slowly, slowly until you get to what you want to do while testing. While running your test. You add a functionality, you run your test, run your function, you run your test. Now you have reached a part where you have added your functionality and all the previous tests pass. So for you to help the next developer who's coming to that same project, remember, he might not be part of that project at that time. He's coming, 
then write a test to test your functionality and add it to that library and then publish it like that. Now, when the next person comes, all they have to do is run the test. You see? So if you are creating something to scale, please write tests. It is very important for you to write tests. Awesome. Another question. What methodology do you employ in your projects? What methodology? I don't understand. Can you <laughs> methodology but meaning? I'm not sure. Probably maybe um the um, architecture and VVM, such kind of of architectures. Probably that's what you wanted to, to maybe, say. maybe maybe Edwin can just can just ask it again so that we yeah. we understand so that we can answer that question. Yes. Oh, waterfall or agile? Mm -hmm. Depends with your team and depends with your um uh with your features or your what you have. You know, I, I know people, I know people who who do who do stand-ups every day, by the way. I know people who do stand-ups every day. You get I'm not I'm I'm not against it. Though I'm not against it. It is just that if you're doing a stand-up today, right? And let's say I was setting up Gradle under developers, you know this. Don't you know this? <laughs> let's say you're doing, <laughs> we're doing a stand-up today and I was setting up Gradle. And then I come tomorrow and we are doing another stand-up. What will I say I have done from yesterday to today? Like, if I tell someone I was setting up Gradle and it was giving me a challenge, hey, someone will start wondering, setting up, how is, how is setting up taking you a whole day? You know, like, sometimes you might be researching something. Like, let's say you, um, you research something for three days. You have not made any progress at all, by the way. You have not made any progress. But you had stand-ups for every single day. What what happens then? What do you guys discuss? Right? So I think it yeah. just depends with it just depends with what, uh, your team that you're working with. Make sure you awesome. communicate. Make sure you communicate with the team first. Make sure you guys talk so that at least you can you can go ahead, both of you knowing what you guys want to achieve. Awesome. So there is this other question from Josfat is asking, is DSA vital for beginners to learn their first jobs? And actually, you can just explain what is DSA. Um, DSA is data structures and algorithms. Yes, data structures and algorithms from lists to queues to trees, to binary trees, to, hey, well, when you say DSA, every every person feels like, well, okay, this is this is it. It is not. Um, different people, different people have different ways of doing things. I would say different companies have very, very unique ways of doing things. And what's important is, do you understand the Android framework. I've seen, I've seen companies just requesting for just the bare bones. Like, do you understand what testing is? Can you write a test? Do you understand the Android framework? Do you understand what dependency injection is? Do you understand why you're using a view model or why you're using a repository, why you're using a use case? Um, do you understand why room is there and you're not directly interfacing with maybe a SQLite or something like that? I think that is more important than DSA because you can know DSA, but if you don't understand the Android framework, there's no helping you. If you don't even understand, let's say something as simple as recomposition in Compose. So you have known all the DSA, but something as simple as recomposition you cannot do, you don't understand how it works, there will be a problem. Because you see DSA is Kotlin specific. There are structures and algorithm in, in Kotlin. It's not 
like let's say Android specific, but it's just Kotlin. So I would I wouldn't say it is it is essential. Knowing them is a plus. It is a real plus because it will help you. Once you see in Kotlin, there are function. It's functional. So something like a list has some functional aspect towards it that helps you, like can help you filter a list faster if you understand DSA. You get. So it is not it is not vital, but knowing it is a plus. Awesome. As we close, any books, resources you'd recommend for Kotlin Android developers? Um, so for Kotlin, for Kotlin, there is Kotlin in Action. Oh, it's a nice book, by the way. Very nice book. Uh, try out Kotlin in Action. It is targeted for beginners. You can start anywhere or any concept you just don't understand. Flip the book, go to that page, and continue on. Uh, uh, if you want a little bit, a little bit more, I think there is advanced Kotlin topics. There's a book called Advanced Kotlin Topics, which you can look at. For Android, um, I would say, how is it called nowadays? Code Labs, Code Labs, documentation. It's called Codeco. Yes, Codeco. Kodeko has very nice resources. Oh, we, and they make it they make it so simple for you to learn and understand. So if you're a beginner, you can you can start you can start it out. Uh, for for books for Android, I think getting started with Android is one awesome book that you can also look at. Awesome. That has been amazing. I think if you're planning to become an Android developer, the resources and the tips that Mambo Brand has shared are well vast enough. And also he shared about DroidCon. So maybe you can give a short intro on what DroidCon is and also the Android 254 community. <clears throat> okay, so the the Android 254 community is a community for Android developers in Kenya for the Android 254 community. I like the way that Android 254 has started inspiring other communities coming up. So if you feel like maybe Android 254 is not your cup of tea, there are un other Android developer communities that you can work with. But I would say Android 254 is like the main Android developer community in Kenya. There is uh, Droidettes, that is uh, ladies trying to get ladies into Android development. There is Droid Konpwani, if you are on that side of uh, the country. I think those are it. I don't know any other. And Kotlin Kenya now is, is more of now the Kotlin community for Kenya. Okay, so that Android 5.4 is the Android part. Kotlin Kenya is now the Kotlin part. You can feel free to reach out, reach out to any organizer, ask them questions, ask them like if even if you have a session or if you want to give a talk. By the way, call for speakers is open. Call for speakers is open, so you can just uh, submit your your talk. Now, DroidCon is international is an international Android developer community. DroidCon itself. So DroidCon K is specific to Kenya. But it is one of the biggest DroidCon community communities in the whole of Africa. I think uh, Chepsi, uh, Chepsi would be in a better position to, to really explain it well. But that is what I always get from DroidCon. Now the actual Android developer community in the whole of Africa. We always have uh, the DroidCon conference every year. And this year, the good thing is uh, the tickets are already out and you can buy. The tickets are already out and you can buy. And they are cheap at this time right now. I assure you these tickets are cheap right now. So please, if you want a ticket, go and buy it right now. Because it might be, people always say it is expensive. I don't think so. But it might be, it might cost more uh, in the coming few months. So try your level best to get your ticket right now before it's too late. 
Awesome, awesome. Thanks so much, Mambo Brian. I believe there's also something that you wanted to share with the community. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So um I've been I've been uh I've been honored to teach and mentor. I have a very awesome intern who uh does oh, does awesome stuff, does awesome work. And as during this year, as I was trying to really contribute back to the community, I set out to create something that would really help anybody starting or just trying to advance in Kotlin, in the Kotlin language specifically. So if you have your browsers or or Cliff can just, I think Cliff, Cliff will paste the link I'm about to share in uh i am not sure is it is it cliffy are you going to share it i don't know you're going to share it though um i want to share a link with, with cliff so that he can share it with you mm -hmm. um a minute this is, you see, this is this is where you know now everything goes haywire. <laughs> this is where everything goes haywire. What have I just written? I think I've written the same thing. Okay, good. So here it is. So if you're starting out in, if you're starting out in Android, or you want to upscale in Android, I have created, I created something uh, called Kotlin Bits, and this is trying to learn Kotlin in small, small, very minute bits. Like you don't have to go deep into it. And if you if you if you check from the first, I uh, even the first welcome, welcome bit, it says it is it is not structured. You can jump to any bit that you want and just learn that perspective that you want. So if you feel like you want to upscale in Kotlin, also feedback is feedback is is very highly recommended. We would really like for you to give us feedback so that we can try and customize it so that you guys can can use it and enjoy it. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So I have shared um, the details there. It's on your screen right now. So head over there, share your feedback, oh. and um, also. Mambo brand, you can also share your links, your socials, where someone can connect with you, where we can always find you. And yes. um and we'll always connect. I can see there are also great insights. So I can see Makabuto um has said, I happen to try code block and Kotlin at the same time for an Android dev um can help me differentiate the best use as a beginner since all when command uh gives the same output probably maybe you can you can rephrase the question and then i can ask it so i have posted i've also posted a a short clip that i've shared there with Cliff so that I can share it with you. Short clip of what is in store, what is coming. Awesome, awesome. Thanks so much, Mambo Brian. And thanks so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you all for, for all the all the wonderful comments. Uh, I believe today's stream has been interesting. Also, if you'd want to speak, please do reach out. My name is Cliff Gore. If you search on Google right now, just search Cliff Gore. You'll see all my socials there. You can always reach me on Twitter, Cliff Gore underscore. You can reach on LinkedIn, Cliff Gore. Send a connection and tell me I want to speak. And I would always create a session for you. Thanks so much, Mambo Brian, for coming in today. As usual, the sessions do happen um, twice 
um bi-weekly so we we would always do them bi-weekly uh but since uh due to a few change changes we would have another one next week so stay put because we have a wonderful person who will be joining us you can also check mambo's brand's portfolio and you can follow him there and uh yeah awesome thanks so much brand thanks so much everyone for coming as usual these sessions they are here to help you gain insights as android developers as people from the um tvet acat from the tvet google acat program so for those who i who don't know about the tvet um google acat program so this is a program that is facilitated by me of course and a few individuals a few amazing individuals who are training i can say tutors people who teach in those tvet institutions and also students which are trainers who are training to become teachers in those institutions so they are being trained as android developers it was commissioned by the late professor magoha last year and uh, it's ongoing so if you are from any tvet institution welcome and uh, even if you do want to speak as well you're more than welcome to join in this session and as usual i'm your host cliff gore bye for now and see you next week bye everyone